Okay, so before we get started with our demonstration today, let's take a look at the actual blades and handles we're going to be working with. Now, I like to use the official Dermaplane Pro number 10 butter blades. These are the absolute best blades that I've found, and they're remarkable. Now, each blade is going to come in an individually wrapped, sealed foil container. These are designed to be opened up and peeled away. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is peel the blade back where it's about halfway exposed like so. Never actually remove the entire blade and have it just between your fingers while trying to install it on the tip of the handle. You will cut yourself. Make sure you only have half of the blade exposed. You'll notice that there's a cutout in the middle of the blade as well as an angled end. Our blade handle looks like this. Now you'll notice that angled little groove right there. That is where our blade is actually going to slide on and sit. You'll also notice the very tip of the handle has a slight groove all the way around the middle perimeter and that is where the center of our blade is going to rest. So I'm gonna to try to get this in up close the way you're going to install this. Again, you're tightly holding on to the unexposed end of the blade. So again, our angled end is going to fit onto our angled groove on our tip. So we're actually gonna to wanna to bring the tip around to the back side of the blade Feed it through this middle area here until it catches into those grooves and then simply slide and snap into place. Once the blade is secure, you can go ahead and remove it from the foil packet and now you are ready to go. All right, let's get started with our demonstration, shall we? Okay, so for our demonstration today, we have Monica who has agreed to be our model for the dermaplaning. Now, before performing this procedure on any client for the first time, you need to make sure that you have a thorough skin and health history from the client to make sure that it's safe to perform on their skin. You're also going to want to make sure that they have signed the consent form for dermaplaning, acknowledging that there are a possibility of small nicks and cuts to the skin, as well as any contraindications or post-treatment protocols. So the last thing you're going to want to discuss with your client before starting the dermaplaning procedure is to reiterate that this is a very sharp blade that you're going to be using about the face and neck area. So it's very important that your client stay as still as possible and not try to talk. Now sometimes your client's going to need to move to scratch their nose, perhaps cough or sneeze. So they're going to need to communicate this need to you. Many skin therapists will ask your client to raise their hand to signal. Now I found working close to the skin with your face looking downward, sometimes you're not going to see that. So what I found is the most useful for me is to ask my client to simply snap their fingers. This tells me to immediately stop what I'm doing pull the blade away from the skin, and they can do what they need to do before continuing on. So we are all set to start our dermal planing demonstration. Now we have already cleansed the skin. We have applied an enzyme to help soften the surface layer of skin and make the dermal planing just a little bit more effective. And the next thing I'm going to do is a nice alcohol wipe all over the surface of the area that I'm going to dermaplane. This is going to ensure any uh, leftover dirt, residual cleanser, massage cream, anything else is lifted off the skin so we have nice clean surfaces to work on. Now alcohol can be pretty smelly when it's applied directly around the nose. So in some cases, you might want to give your client a little handheld fan of some sort so that they can fan the smell away as you're working with this. So we have our alcohol wipe here and as you can see, I've given Monica a little handheld fan and we're just gonna do a nice clean wipe 
one time over each surface. Always remember to work from the inside out and in an upward motion. Okay, so we have our blade. We also have a couple of cotton rounds that we're gonna lay here. Um, I like to use one to wipe the skin and hair off the blade as I'm using it. And I like to have the second one just to kind of dust and wipe off the skin. So I always like to start on one side. It's very important before you actually make your strokes to stretch the skin nice and taut in the area you're going to be doing and this will ensure less risk of any nicks or cuts because you have more surface tension on that area of the skin. So you see I'm stretching and then at a 45 degree angle we're going to lightly do small short strokes all the way up like so. And then I will wipe that on my cotton round. And then we move over to the next section. can see here all of the skin and that vellus hair that we're lifting off. Now, as you can see here, she has had a recent breakout. So we wanna go pretty gently over the surface of that so that we don't cause any additional damage or inflammation. But this service is excellent for helping to remove any scarring or pigmentation that might've been caused by other breakouts in the past. Now, after you finish the majority of the upward motion, you want to kind of get down in their light and look at the surface of the skin and kind of make sure you've gotten everything. And then I like to come back in the opposite direction just to make sure we've gotten everything off. Again, stretching the skin, short strokes, Always want to make sure you go very carefully around the eyes. Never go upwards all the way toward the eye. You want to kind of stop at the top of the cheekbone. You want to wait until you can come under the eye in a sideways motion so you can get that nice tight stretch to the skin and get just as close to the underneath of the eye as possible going very lightly so as not to cut or damage any of that super, super thin, delicate skin just around the eye area. Now, a lot of people, when they do the dermaplane, when it comes to the, around the lip and the nose area, they'll ask the client to push their tongue up underneath. So go ahead and show us that to give us kind of like this rounded edge that gets really tiring for the client so I like to just have my client relax and I do all the work for them 
We'll start on one side here. We'll start on the top. Nice big stretch. And very gently, we're going to come across. You see there all that nice, lovely dead skin and hair that we're getting off. We're going to go the same way across the bottom. And follow that down along the curve of the chin. Go ahead and lift your chin for me. Trying to go up and over the curve of the chin can be very difficult. I find it's easier for myself personally to come around the edge like this, going left to right instead of up and down. Now when I get back to just underneath the chin to the neck area, then I'll continue with my up down motion. Now we're going to go ahead and start on our second side. So again, we're asking our client to tip as far to the right as possible so we can start with the neck and work our way up. Forty-five degree angle, skin stretched nice and tight. Now please remember this is a very sharp blade. You do not need to apply a lot of pressure during your scrape. Very light pressure, not too heavy handed. So we certainly don't want any nicks or cuts on our client. Now, since I'm right handed, you'll remember on the other side I went from the nose toward the outer corner of the eye. Can't do that on this side because I'm not left-handed and I would have to do it like this where most of the blade would be over the eye and the eyelashes. So I'm going to go right-handed the same direction as before except this time I'm going to go from the outer corner of the eye to the inner corner. Again Nice stretch, very, very gently along that delicate eye tissue, all the way up the side of the nose. Same thing with the lip area. I'm working from the outside to the middle this time instead of from the middle to the outer corner. last thing I like to do is just underneath the eyebrow. I do not recommend doing this if you are not fairly well seasoned in dermaplaning. And we only go just very lightly just under the arch of the brow. We never do the actual eyelid itself, that tissue is the thinnest on the body and the most delicate. This just gives a nice little shape to the brow. 
without waxing or tweezing. And just real quick, here is a view of some of what we took off the surface of the skin today. So you can see not only hair, but lots of dead surface cells as well. Now your client may experience a little bit of a wind burnt, kind of a cold wind feeling for a little while. Um, it's always important after doing this to apply a nice hydrating mask, something that's gonna help to calm and replenish. I like to use a nice milk protein mask that I keep in my refrigerator so it's nice and cool when it goes on the skin. Or a rosemary basil that has a little bit of a bentonite clay base to it. And this is really great for antiseptic and calming and relaxing the skin. So I have chosen for Monica's skin in particular, our rosemary basil mask smells wonderful and again this is going to be for antiseptic anti-inflammatory nice cooling properties to it this is a great recovery mask for not just dermaplaning but any kind of resurfacing treatment like a chemical peel um, or a microdermabrasion just a nice finishing mask to help rebalance the ph of the skin rehydrate and help to calm. This will remain on the skin for about 10 minutes or so. Depending on how you like to work with your practice, you can either do neck massage, scalp massage, hand and arms, or simply let your client take a nice deserved rest.